Today I'm going to show you five of the most common mistakes I see teams make when it comes to using Asana. And most importantly, I'm going to show you how to fix them. But if you're new here, my name is Mark Key. I am an Asana partner and the CEO of Surface. And I make videos like these every single week to help you get the most out of your Asana instance. And so if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, hit the like button if you're getting value from these videos. And most importantly, please hit the notification bell so that you never miss a video. Let's get into the demo. So the first most common mistake I see when creating projects and working in Asana is that we're simply creating a list of tasks with no assignee, no actionable steps that need to be taken, and no due dates. In order for a task to be complete, we need to have an assignee, a due date, and some sense of what action needs to be taken. And so in this case, we have our launch project. And if I open up these subtasks here, we can simply see that there are no assignees, there are no due dates, there's no context around any of this. It seems like we started our brainstorming stage and then we just left it there. We didn't come back to review anything, update anything, or make anything actionable. And so when we do that, what it does is it creates confusion. There's ambiguity around who's to complete the task, what it needs to be completed by, what the priority of that task is, and any context or information that needs to be applied to that task. And so again, we have to have an assignee, a due date, and some sense of the action that needs to be taken. The next most common mistake I see is that we're creating multiple rules when we can create groups of rules for the, the most common things that we need to do. I'm gonna give you an example as we build something out here. And so as you can see, we have our to launch uh, section here and then we've got a to do in progress and to be reviewed and then done. So before I get too far, I'm gonna actually open up our fields here and I'm going to add a new field. Let's just see if I've got one. I probably have a status. There we go. We got a task status and I'm just gonna make one edit to it. This is gonna be to be reviewed. And so I'm just going to say done. There we go. So then the way that this would work is we have our task here. And of course, we have a, an assignee and a due date like so. Task two. Let me just create a few more just like that. And so as we move these tasks through, we want to be able to update this task status section, right? So task two goes into be to be reviewed and we're doing something like that. And then this one goes down here and then we want this one to be done. All right. So we're doing this over and over again. Technically do from this point, let's put this one in, in the to do area is we would often see, or I would often see, we'd go over to the customize section and we would then add a rule. Now we're going to add this rule and we're going to go in here and we're going to say when task is moved to this section, we're going to add the condition that it's going to move to in progress. And then what do we want to do? We want to change the status to in progress and then we're going to publish that rule. All right, so it works. Let's let's just test it out here quickly. There we go. It's going to move it from to do to in progress. Perfect. Now we're going to go in and we're going to do another one. So I'm going to go back in. I'm going to add a rule. And this time we're going to say when the task is moved to this section, condition we're going to add is that the section is uh, to be reviewed. What do we want to do? We want to change the status to to be reviewed like so. So you can imagine, right? We have all these different sections. We want all these actions to be taken. And so we just continue to pile these rules up. And as you can see, there's no naming conventions here. If I want to edit one of the rules, I, I can't really do that because I haven't taken the time to name anything either. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, then we're looking at the names right in that we can adjust. And so what I want to do is show you a different way and how we can group these different kinds of rules to keep things really organized. So rather than having individual rules, I'm going to go in and I'm going to use the other than or otherwise if, sorry, branch to do what we want to do. So first I'm going to name this rule and we're going to call this rule section changes. This is going to handle all of the actions that happen when it comes to making changes in any of our sections. So I'm going to say when task is added to the section to do, what do we want it to do? We want to change the task status to to do. Then we're going to go back over here. We're going to go otherwise if. Now I'm going to say when a task is added to this section, section is in progress. What do we want to do? We want to change the task status to in progress. Let me just finish these up here. Probably speed this up. Change the task status to to be reviewed. And then the last one, otherwise if when it's done, it is done. We're going to change the task status to done, but we're also going to add in here. We're going to do this. Or we're going to complete the task and change completion status. We're going to complete that task and we're going to do it. So that, that will do it. So there we go. We're going to publish this rule now. And so now instead of having all these different rules, we have one that has section changes. If we do need to edit anything 
into the section changes, we now have one clean place we can go to do all of that versus having to decipher what this means when I created it and what section it will affect. All right. I may be a bit biased in saying so, but if you haven't already done it, I highly recommend subscribing to our newsletter, All Systems Go. Each week we deliver the latest news, blog posts, and even free resources on Asana and workflow optimization directly to your inbox. The best part, it's totally free. It's the perfect resource you're looking for to improve your system building skills and productivity through process improvements. All Systems Go is designed to be your go-to guide in navigating workflow optimization, especially if you're new to it. Click the link below to subscribe. Number three is gonna be using tasks and subtasks as projects. And so what I mean by that, if we go back to up to our launch example here, I'll often see just headings similar to that. If we go into the task detail view, we can now see the, the sections that you know the team member has created. We can see the different subtasks here. And so rather than having a project on its own where we can manage all the different phases of this product launch, we have a task with a bunch of subtasks and sections and now we're managing this project as a task, right? And so if we wanted to drill down further, we can go into that subtask, we can put more info here, and then we can add a sub subtask like so. And you know, this is fine when we have just one layer of subtasks, but as you can see, when we get into sub subtasks, we lose that visibility. So this is problematic for a few reasons. Again, there's a lack of visibility around the status, right? If we wanted to use the subtasks to create some sense of progress, we could do that. But then we would have to go into the task detail and then we would have to do the same for the sub 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 tasks right and so there's a lack of visibility it can get really confusing because you're not sure where to look and then it's difficult to understand the status and report on anything okay because when we look at the status update for a project we're able to report on the entire project but if our marketing manager or cmo comes to you and says hey what's the status of those speed enhancements that we're making on the website launch where would we go how would we be able to give that information and so so I always recommend take the project management out of the task level and bring it up to the project level. Create a whole project for it, have its own custom fields, and then be able to report on the status of that one single project so that everyone is clear on exactly where the project is at. And let's go back here. The fourth one I'm going to talk about is not leveraging custom fields. And so earlier I added in the task status custom field. And so without custom fields, we see things like really bare. There, there's no context for any. Thing. Again, we want to be able to come into a project and see at a high level view where our status is at, who's working on what, by when, all of those things need to be easily seen when we go into a project. And so I'm going to add in another here. I'm going to choose from the library. I'm going to go just priority, pull that in. Maybe I'll just go and pull out another random one. Do I have one for deliverables? Yes, we do. Perfect. All right. And so now we're able to go in and we can see, let me close this up really quickly, what deliverables we have here, what the priority of this is. We can add all these different different variables. I'm just going to randomly pick these and throw them in there. Another high priority. And then this one here is for banners, right? So now we can come in and we can see this. And what custom fields allows us to do now is one, look at it and see, okay, new mobile app that's under the hero video section. I don't know why it would be there, but again, just the random custom fields. And now what I'm able to do is actually group by custom fields. So if I go in the group by rather than sections, I can go and group by the task status. So it's showing me to do in progress to be reviewed. I can go and I can look at the priority, right? Like so. I can go and look at the deliverables, like so. And it breaks down all the tasks in those sections. So this can be really helpful if you want to, say, create a filter or create a view for the deliverables. So then we can come over here and we can go save as new tab and we can call this deliverables. Right? And so now we have a main list view that sorts it by the section that we have it in. But then we go over to deliverables. Now we can sort by that custom field. And so another thing we can do is obviously go into the dashboards. And if I were to create a chart, I could say by custom field, I want to see deliverables, task count right there. So now we can see by the type of deliverable, by priorities, whatever the case may be, by task status, how we're doing. So we're getting it just a better view. And again, if you're doing this in subtasks, you're just missing so much context. All right. And the last one, I'm going to show you the most common mistake that just irks me. I just don't understand why it happens is that people are using projects as their own to-do lists and they're just putting all of their random to-dos. So let's go and create a new project and I'm just gonna call this Marquis to-do list. 
those of you that have been using Asana for a long time will, will know where I'm going with this, but we often see just things like this. This could be set up project, book, team, meeting, call the doctor, could be anything, right? Pay taxes, like so. And so we have this project for that. This could be, actually I'll even take this a step further and I'll say Marquis, uh personal to-do list. Right. And then we could have another project that says, you know, Marquis work to do list. Right. And so I want to stress that when I see this, I'm like, why aren't you using the my tasks? And so often they don't know about my tasks or don't understand how to use it. So again, we have this my task section. It's set up for us to be able to put all of our personal to do's, all of our work to do's. And unless you are delegating access to your my task view, this is private to you. Right. Any task that you put in here could be private to you. You can create your own section really, really easily and you can get all all the information that you need without worrying about anyone else uh, being able to see your tasks. And so that was it. Hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching. As always, hit the notification button to never miss a video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the like if you got some value from this. And as always, we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.